Hey folks, Bud Talbot, W0RMT. Welcome to our second video in the series on DVSwitch Mobile. Today we're going to talk about installing and configuring the DVSwitch Mobile server on your Raspberry Pi. So what you need to have at hand in order to start doing this is a Raspberry Pi single board computer. Any variant will do. I use a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus for mine. A micro SD card. We recommend a minimum 16 gigabyte class 10 card. Some SD card imaging software. If you're on Windows, you'll probably use Win32 Disk Imager. Melina Etcher is another choice. I use uh, Linux. There's a native native uh, utility built into Ubuntu that you can use. You'll need an SSH client for remote access to your DVSM server. Um, recommend using PuTTY. You'll need some local internet access for your server via Ethernet cable or Wi-Fi. And optional but highly recommended, you'll need an external hardware vo vocoder like the Northwest Digital Thumb DV or a DV stick in order to have quality audio on DSTAR especially. So what you're going to do first is download the latest DVSM image for Raspberry Pi at this URL. We'll post that in the comments uh, below the video as well. Once you've uh, downloaded that zip file, you're going to need to extract the file so you can get the disk image file. Prepare your micro SD card. Write the image to the micro SD card. And optional but highly recommended, this is something I'll talk through in the next clip, is uh, creating and writing a wpasupplicant.conf file to the boot sector on that card so that your uh, DVSwitch mobile server will automatically connect to your home Wi-Fi network on first boot. Um, and you won't have to connect the monitor, keyboard, and mouse to configure that. Alternatively, you could plug in an Ethernet cable and plug it directly into your switch and, and get it on your network that way as well. But um, that's something we'll talk about in the next clip. Okay, so if we look over here, <clears throat> I've got an SD card that I've prepared. Here it is in the disks utility and Ubuntu Linux, or the variant of Ubuntu I'm using. And you can see that I've already created a single file system under a single partition here and formatted that. So that's ready to go. You just need to format your SD card um, with a, um, a FAT32 system, and it's ready to go. After you've downloaded the uh, DVSwitch server image, you need to extract it or you've downloaded the zip file, extract it so you have the image file. And then you're going to want to write that image to that SD card. So here in Linux, I'll use this disk image writer tool that is natively installed. I'll just choose the SD card that's there and click Start Restoring. And this will prompt us to say, do we want to go ahead and restore this image or write this image to this SD card? We click Restore. Of course, we have to enter our password. Um, to make sure we're good, and it's going to start writing that. So that's going to take a few minutes. In the meantime, we'll uh, wait till that's done and then finish this out. Okay, now that that's done writing, uh, you'll see on that disk I've got two partitions created, a boot partition and the root file system, and a couple of chunks of free space. Now what I want to do is I want to write this WPA supplicant file to the boot partition. That way, when I boot up the Raspberry Pi um, with the DV Switch mobile image for the first time, it'll automatically connect to my Wi-Fi networks. Now, this WPA supplicant file is a pretty simple file that can be created. It's the same one I use with all of my um, uh, PyStar um, uh, images as well. You can actually create this on the PyStar.uk website. Um, there's a utility for creating it. You'll have to enter your network SSID and your password. You can always just download uh, a version of this file and edit it yourself too. It's very easy to do. So you might search for WPA underscore supplicant dot CONF and then edit that file, add in your um, particular network SSID and your password. And then that way it's really easy to automatically uh, have your uh, server connect to your Wi-Fi right away on first boot. You don't have to um, worry about connecting a keyboard and mouse and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that file and just drag it on or just copy it. Sorry, I'll, I'll copy it and then I'll paste it into this boot partition um, so that it'll be um, uh, ready to go. I guess maybe I didn't copy it as soon as I uh, boot that up for the first time. There it is. Okay, so now we're going to eject this card and uh, put it in our uh, Raspberry Pi, boot it up, and then we'll take it from there about connecting and starting to configure our server. 
Okay, now that we've got that new SD card in our Pi and we've plugged the power into it, we need to give it a second and then find it on our network. Um, there's a number of ways you can do this. I use an app on my Android phone called Thing to scan for all the devices on my network. Um, also, we have Ubiquity uh, Unify for my home network, so I can look in there and see the client name and address. It'll show up as Raspberry Pi initially. Hopefully, you can distinguish it from your other Pis, but you need to find its IP address on your network and make a note of that. Then we're going to connect to it using SSH. We'll use PuTTY for that, and I'll walk through all these things in just a, a second in a, another clip. Um, once we log in, we'll log in as the user DV switch with the default password of DV switch. We'll need to change that password, um, and then we're going to go through an update process where we update to see if any of the uh, files or packages in there are uh, upgradable. We'll reboot it, and then we will access the DVS menu and go through our basic setup. So let's head over to our Secure Shell client now and go, all through, go through all those things. Okay, now that we've got our DV Switch mobile server up and running, let's connect to it using PuTTY. So I've entered the IP address of the server on our network using port 22, and I'll connect using SSH. First time you do this, you'll probably get a dialog which says, do you really want to connect? Because you've never connected to this machine before. Go ahead and select OK. When you log in for the first time, you use the login DV switch, and the password will also be DV switch. You'll be prompted to change that password the first time you log in. And then after you change it to a new password, um, you'll need to log back in um, uh, to the system again. So once you've done that and you log back in, then you can go ahead and update the uh, packages on the system and uh, reboot it, and then we can enter the, the menu system after that. So first we'll go through, we'll do a sudo apt update to update the packages. There are no packages here that need to be updated because I've just done this recently, but it'll go through and tell you how many there are, if there are. Um, after it tells you that things can be upgraded, updated or not, we'll do sudo apt upgrade uh, to and oops, got to spell it correctly. Um, to install those packages, and then again, zero will be upgraded um, or installed here, and then we will go through and reboot the system um, before entering the menu. So let's do that. Give it a second, then we'll come back and enter the menu system. Okay, after we reboot and we're logged back in, we'll enter the menu system by typing DVS, that's just Delta Victor Sierra. And once we're there, we'll get uh, this nice menu system where we can go through our configuration pages. So you want to start with the initial configuration here and just run through that dialog. So hit enter and it'll ask you, you need to have ready your call sign, your DMR ID, the port that you want to use, your USRP port, um, whether or not you're using a hardware AMBI device like the Northwest Digital Thumb DV and some other information. And that'll get you up and running. So click yes and then proceed through on that setup. Entering your call sign, your DMR ID, you'll need to enter that ID plus a two digit suffix so that uh, it can assign you a repeater number. Usually just do 99 by default. Uh, what D star module? you want to assign to this uh, repeater that you're creating. Um, Bravo is just the default. Your NXDN ID, if you're using NXDN, your USRP port number, uh, we'll use something in the 50,000 range here. Uh, the Brandmeister server that you would like to use, I'll use Brandmeister 3102. The password for that, unless you've set a hotspot password in self-care, in which case you'll need to enter that here. Um, whether or not you're using um, a thumb DV or no hardware vocoder, something like that. So I'm using the thumb DV or DV stick, so I'll select that, the baud rate for that, and then your initial configuration is finished. Once that, um, processes and does the restart of the uh, system, you will be back to the main menu and we'll talk about more of these uh, other setup things in the next video. But right now, you're up and running. Okay, now that you've got your DV switch mobile server up and running on your Raspberry Pi, what are your next steps? 
Uh, in video three, we'll talk about installing and configuring the DVSwitch mobile client app on Android. And video four, then we'll go through some advanced configuration settings of the server and the mobile app. And then in five, we'll talk about installing the Puck client on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. And finally, in video six, we will discuss configuring those Puck clients. So you're pretty much up and running now. Um, be sure to join us over on groups.io and the DVSwitch mobile group, and uh, good luck.